as I mean, I'm I'm the executive director of the Gaming County Destination Marketing Organization, and we focus on uh, lodging providers in this community, be they uh, hoteliers or short-term vacation renter, uh, rental owners. Uh, so that's who make up our membership, and that's who we uh, advocate for. So, Rusty Brantz, everybody, with the uh, Destination Marketing Organization, to you to let you know what's going on with um, vacationers, um, the uh, the hotel business, the res- the rental business, basically tourism in the Panhandle, and um, what what the climate is, what Phase One is, what Phase Two is, what Phase Three is and where we're sitting. Uh, so today is May 7th uh, in the morning, so a lot can happen, but uh, Rusty, take it away. Yeah, well, thanks, Walter. I appreciate you having me on, and uh, I am Rusty Branch. I'm the executive director of the Gamby County Destination Marketing Organization, um, which would suggest that we do marketing, but actually we do not. It's just sort of a trade name and, um, and something that we took on years ago that stuck with us. But uh, what we really do is we advocate for uh, the lodging community, be that uh, hoteliers or short-term vacation rental owners. Uh, These are the folks who make up our membership. It's a private organization. We don't receive any public dollars. Um, And so these are all local individuals who own um, lodging uh, units within Escambia County. And they they care about uh, their business, certainly. They care about tourism. Uh, but they also care about this community because they live here. Uh, they're not from Atlanta or Nashville or New York, like we'll often see in uh, destination markets like a Pensacola Beach or Perdido Key, where ownership is somewhere else. All of our members are right here uh, in Escambia County or Santa Rosa. Um, and so what we do is that we, we just advocate for uh, things that are going to help uh, our employees, our guests, uh, our experience here in Escambia County. Uh, be that at the county or, or the state, or sometimes even uh, like we've seen in this pandemic at the national level. Um, and so that's what we primarily focus on. Uh, how can we make a better experience for, for all involved, the tourists that are coming to town, the locals that want to get to their beaches or uh, experience their downtown, um, and the employees who, who make all of that work. So um, that's, that's our focus. Man, that's fantastic, Rusty. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. It is it is um, a pandemic. I've never seen a pandemic before, so a lot of it's new to me. The most amazing thing is um, we're selling just as many houses um, as we did last week, the week before, the week before that. Our trends are um, almost unnoticeable. What is crazy, and I think you'll get a kick out of this, is we actually track showings across the country. We track showings. Um, through a, a software called Showing Time. Um, some people hate it, some people love it, but it tracks exactly what time your appointment is and whether you show up or not. And so middle of March, when we started shutting things down across the country, uh, the showings just absolutely took a dive, like 47% off. So we're still showing 53% of the houses. And then um, that dive went all the way down, like I said, 47% of the showings just disappeared. And that started to come back to where we're only uh, 3% under a normal uh, market of showing. Now, last year, we were up a little bit. So we're still 23% down from last year. But our showings are back up to about almost 80% of normal. And our closings are the same. New listings are coming on the same. So the real estate market is, um, is going along um, kind of crazy strong, which... Um, is helping the prices. So mm-hmm. it's crazy that um, people think, a lot of people ask me all, every day, you know, when's the bottom, when's the bottom, when, when are these prices gonna go down? And I'm like, well, they haven't gone down yet. Um, we're expecting uh, at least a 3% increase in prices. So <laughs> with the low rates, if you can get a mortgage, you know, definitely consider planning on uh, looking, looking virtually, whatever. So. My question to you guys is, though, and I want to talk a lot more about the DMO, uh, Destination Marketing Organization, but how has this affected your business? Because you guys are kind of right in it where tourism, where the rubber meets the road, it's it's the DMO. Yeah, well, um, I'm glad to hear that 
you're continuing to show and sell houses, which would suggest that it's a real supply and demand issue now and not what we saw in 08. Uh, so that's a good thing for our market, which I think we've understood that for some time that, uh, you know, we just had a high demand and not a big supply. And so um, that's, that's, that's really healthy and good. Uh, for us in uh, tourism and lodging, restaurants, sort of the front line of uh, the visitor experience in the Scambia County and really across the state of Florida and the whole country, uh, we were the front lines and uh, we took it on the chin uh, <laughs> first. And I think foremost, I mean, tourism just fell off, Air, airline travel, uh, you know, amusement, everything just shut down. Um, and so it came to a a grinding halt at the end of March, where we would see occupancies um, at Pensacola Beach and Petito Key, you know, well into the 80 or 90 percent, um, uh, you know, for a whole uh, market area. We saw it in the single digits. Uh, April was certainly that. Um, had to uh, furlough, reduce hours, and ultimately lay off a lot of employees. Um, there's somewhere between 20 and 22,000 people in the Scambia County residents, individuals who are employed uh, in the tourism sector. And so outside of the government and healthcare, it's the third largest employer um, in the Scambia County. And so, you know, when you take it as, as um, direct as we did initially, um, then that was, a, that was a lot of layoffs that came very quickly because uh, we just didn't have the uh, the income to sustain that and so that was that was a tough thing um, again all of our members who uh, are locals here they're very involved one of our members uh, actually lives in one of the hotels that uh, he owns and so you know to lay off employees wasn't something that they did from afar off and um, it was very difficult um, and folks held on as long as they could um, you know but uh, but our impact was sudden and exact. It wasn't uh, some of the trickle impact that we see in other industries. I know, you know, there are folks who do things like uh, lawn care and their contracts began to be cut commercial lawn um, as this went on and folks sought other ways to, to reduce uh, their spin and their burn. And so they felt that downstream a little bit. Matter of fact, I, I was talking to a gentleman in um, uh, vehicle repair, uh, collision repair, and uh, he said they could they could get a car in today and begin working on it because with so few people driving, there have been a lot less accidents. And so their business has just, uh, in some sense, dried up. Um, so I think we saw that kind of uh, downstream effect for a lot of businesses, but that wasn't the case in tourism, uh, restaurant lodging. It was immediate. And so we had to take some pretty drastic measures uh, to, to keep these businesses um, in a position where they could begin, as we're seeing now, uh, a slow reopening and hopefully get back to um, uh, some sense of normalcy uh, in the not too distant future. So when you say you, you had to um, change employment, if you t took all the employers that you're, you're talking about in the industry, so you've got condos, you've got hotels, um, I think that pretty much sums it up um, from what you're in charge of. How, and you're saying it's over 20,000 or 22,000. Um, can you put that into perspective? I think healthcare in this county is, is or the two county area is like 26,000 or 27,000, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when we talk about tourism jobs, you know, that's everything from, um, you know, it's not, we're not counting necessarily your fast food restaurants, but, uh, you know, downtown restaurants, Pensacola Beach, Perdido Key restaurants to amusement, to charter, uh, boat fishing companies, uh, you know, the folks renting the parasails on Pensacola Beach to hoteliers, all of that in, is included. Um, you know, there's, there's not the ancillary. There are certain people in town who are employed at banks, uh, you know, who, who do a lot of their business with uh, hoteliers or vacation rental folks, and that's the reason they're there. We don't count them, um, but the direct employees, yeah. So, you know, in terms of the total number that were laid off or furloughed, um, you know, I can't speak to that because we, we have some restaurants within our organization or some owners who have restaurants, but we're not really the bulk of the restaurants or a lot of the amusement um, uh, sector. But certainly with uh, hotels, even uh, just at Pensacola Beach, in one week, uh, there was uh, close to 2,000 individuals within that week that were uh, furloughed or uh, laid off. Um, and so, you know, I was talking to some of the members of the uh, Santa Rosa Island Authority 
and, uh, and about that impact and how sudden it was on Pensacola Beach. Um, and so, you know, when we were at a point where a lot of those businesses were not just staffed, but staffing up, uh, you know, through spring break and getting ready for the summer, this would have been a time when we would have been hiring um, and we were unable to do that and, and began to, uh, you know, have, have folks uh, just have their work reduced. Um, it was it was tough, um, but you know there were really no other options at that point. Yeah, it's it's a it's horrendous. Um, let's talk about phase one, and then quickly jump into phase th phase two and three, so we can kind of get a feel for what the state's doing to us and for us, and what the vacationers are seeing and need to see, and especially the property owners, maybe non hoteliers, what they need to be looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in terms of tourism in the, the three phases, phase one started uh, May 1st. And uh, we certainly as a state, uh, the governor and his office and his direction has been to continue to not invite tourists to come to the area, to the state. Um, there's a lot of focus on beginning to open the, uh, the essential or non-essential businesses that were closed. Hotels were never considered uh uh, non-essential. They were they were deemed essential in the first orders that the governor sent out. So hotels have never ceased operating. Some of our hoteliers locally um, put limits of 50% and did certain things because you know they were listening to the healthcare community, um, but they were never restricted. And so there hasn't been a reopening for them in that sense. Uh, vacation rentals were one of the first uh, things to be restricted because of the influx uh, primarily of New Yorkers to Southeast Florida uh, to the Miami-Dade uh, area where they were having a big outbreak. And uh, so the governor, you know, being the governor, it's very difficult to just, uh, you know, put an order for one section of the state. So he put it across the whole state um, and, uh, you know, just restricted completely uh, short-term vacation rentals. Um, and so we had hoped on May 1st that he would let that uh, order lapse and that short-term vacation rentals would begin to reopen. We were hearing that word out of Tallahassee. Um, you know, some of the legislators and folks who have contact with the governor's office. But unfortunately, he did not. And he uh, reissued uh, the restriction on short term vacation rentals. Um, and so the idea now is that in phase one, hotels are opening and fully operating. Um, you know, restaurants were allowed to reopen in phase one with 25 percent capacity inside and then outside dining, you know, as long as the CDC spacing was uh, followed which is great because most of our resort, the beach, Pensacola Beach, Perdido Key restaurants have outside seating. That's what guests like, um, you know, uh, and hope for. So they were able to, uh, beginning this past Monday, begin to really uh, reopen, um, but we still don't have the short-term vacation rentals. The idea now is that in phase two, which we believe will begin on the 15th, you know, we'll go two weeks into phase one and then uh, start phase two is that short-term vacation rentals may be allowed to start booking then, but the the word I'm hearing um, and the governor has has uh, I think uh, spoken about is that uh, they'll only be able to rent to Florida residents. Um, again, Florida is a big state, third largest state in, in the union, um, and so I think there are a lot of Floridians who do want to get out of their houses, and so that I think will have some impact. Um, but it won't be until phase three, which I think the earliest that would come is June 1st, according to how, uh, you know, we're continuing to watch the numbers on positive cases and hospitalizations and deaths. But June 1st is when uh, it sounds like phase three, that short term vacation rentals would come back online uh, at full capacity and be able to rent to whomever. But again, you know, we, we thought that was going to be May 1st. So <laughs> who, who knows uh, what the governor's office decides and largely. Uh, on these decisions, it's the governor and his team making them. Um, and so it's, it's very difficult. Local municipalities, counties, uh, commissioners, city council members have advocated for certain things. Members of the legislature advocate for certain things. But at the end of the day, it's the governor's decision. And um, thus far, he's been unwilling to begin to expand uh, vacation rentals um, and, and allow them to rent. What's um, What's the most interesting challenge you've had to face um we've talked about already you know laying off people or furloughing them or whatever but i mean what's just uh, the nitty-gritty what's the the challenge um that we probably don't even think of 
Yeah, I mean, you probably think of it. Um, I think the most unique challenge is, is how do you restart? You know, I mean, I, you look at a Walt Disney World and they shut down completely. I think uh, I heard that they had been shut down for two total days since they opened. And then they got shut down for two or three months, right? And so they don't know how to restart and to create that experience. And so one of the things that we've talked about in the tourism community is that, you know, we don't want to restart very quickly and try to invite everybody here. It's not healthy one. We, you know, um, to have hotspot communities uh, flooding here. Um, but we also don't want people flooding here and we can't provide a great experience because we don't want to damage the Pensacola brand. You know, we want to have restaurants and amusements and hotels able to provide that top level service that they have uh, done for years. That's created, you know, a really great tourist destination and a destination for our locals in the last 20 or 30 years. I mean, if you went to Pensacola Beach in the late 80s, early 90s, there was a taco shack and one hotel, right? It was, it was just kind of, uh, uh, not a lot for tourists to enjoy and not even a lot for locals to enjoy. I mean, they had access to the beach, which they have now, but, you know, you go out there now and there's shops, there's dining, there's amusement, there's all sorts of things. And that's something we've built over time. Um, and we don't want to hurt that brand and have people come here and have a bad experience and say, well, I'm never going there again. Um, because, uh, again, tourism itself is over a billion dollar industry for Scambia County. It pays a third of our local option sales tax. So a third of the schools we build, a third of the roads we pay, uh, they're paid because we exported our taxes. You and I pay less taxes uh, in Escambia County because visitors come here and pay our portion or, or some portion of our, our taxes. And so we want to uh, we want to keep that industry healthy. And I think that's been the, the, the unique challenge because you feel like you just want to open back up and get business going again. Um, but there's a real balance there uh, with that. Yeah, the business thing is huge, especially with us um, working on the second home market. Um, people, you know, they, they move here for the beach that, you know, the draw is the beach and then they, they fall in love with what you're talking about, the things to do on the island, the things to do downtown Pensacola, mm -hmm. even Perdido Key loves to go downtown Pensacola. Um, it's not that far and there's so much to do. And if you're on the beach, it's really super short. They got arts, um, theater, restaurants, like you said, and just a really good experience. So opening that back up is going to be a key and a challenge. And um, I'm glad you're helping with that. Um, yeah. We all we all need help with that. But um, what are, what are some of the positive outcomes you see um, as a result of what you guys have had to adjust or do? Yeah, so I think positive outcomes. One big one is that when when everything's going well. Um, you, you tend to have uh, find things to have problems over that really aren't problems and you, you create a lot of or a lot of divisions are created. And so one of the positives I've seen out of this is the community coming together and saying, you know, what, what is important and um, how do we protect these businesses and our residents? You know, um, so I've just seen a lot more uh, working together. The chamber uh, Pensacola Greater Chamber put together a task force for reopening that includes so many different people that normally wouldn't be in the same room. You know, we're listening to the healthcare community. We're working uh, with commissioners and city council and the mayor, and they're talking to each other. You know, not not anything outside of sunshine, but where where that's allowable, they've done that. And so I've just seen a lot of um, you know, for lack of a better term, teamwork. And I think that that's been a huge positive. Um, I think for businesses, I've seen this with, uh, you know, our, the folks that we work with that, um, you know, they're reevaluating how do you do business and how do you do it well and what is essential and, um, you know, can people work from home and be effective and some of these things that we have been hesitant to embrace that probably have been coming down the pipe for some years now. Uh, I think folks have seen that, um, you know, hey, hey, this is a good thing. You know, there, there are opportunities here. Our employees can be trusted and they will, um, you know, they can work remotely or in different ways and still get the job done. And so I think I've seen a lot of that. And I'll, I'll tell you personally, um, seeing folks within organizations um, step up and do things that they wouldn't normally do. Uh, you know, when, when you're in an office building and it's costing you a lot of money to, to have a cleaning service, and unfortunately you have to suspend that cleaning service for a while. Um, you, you still got to get your office cleaned, right? Or bathrooms or those sorts of things if you're an essential business. And so I've seen in many instances where employees 
you know, who probably wouldn't have been out doing some leaf blowing or restroom cleaning. Uh, they've jumped in and, and helped out in that way. And so, you know, to me, that's, that, that, that just shows the character of the people in this community, uh, the people in the hospitality industry. I mean, w- what we do, what you do selling homes is to serve your clients, right? And we see that uh, heart of service just coming out. And um, uh, so that, that to me has been a wonderful positive that I hope will carry forward, right? Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, we're, we're real impressed. We've got, um, you know, realtors that are cleaning doorknobs and cleaning countertops and anything people touch, uh, wearing masks and gloves and cleaning lock boxes, you know, just to make sure that that's not passed on. We got um, a lot of people going in between showings and just totally decontaminating, you know, the air surfaces. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty fantastic uh, to see the change. And, um, but it's working and um, hopefully people are staying safe and staying home. Um, so to wrap it up, um, you have any other words of wisdom for us on, on the, the, the Gulf Coast? And and then I don't think we touched on Airbnbs, but if you have any recommendations for people that own those or actually looking to own those, um, what would you tell them? Well, I think, you know, right now we're just waiting on the governor for opening uh, back up. But, you know, in Northwest Florida and in Scambia County, um, Airbnbs, vacation rentals, um, they are they are just uh, wildly popular. And I think in the future going forward, uh, they're going to be a popular choice for folks. Uh, we've seen the data and the sentiment is that people want to travel. They're dreaming about travel is one of the things I saw a statement in a uh, survey the other day, but they're not booking right now because they're fearful. And one of the things we know, and this isn't trying to create a male or female thing, but often it's, it's, it's the moms, it's the, the ladies that are uh, choosing where to go. They're, they're making a decision about vacation. Um, and so right now, those moms are fearful. Um, you know, is this a safe place for me to take my family? And we see that a lot of them are saying, you know, I, I, I'm a little hesitant to go to a hotel, perhaps, or some sort of resort where I'm going to be around a lot of people, but uh, a vacation rental home. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, inquiries uh, about uh, that. And so I think that, you know, in, in this hesitant future we're going to go into, at least for the next, I would say, year, half a year at a minimum, there are going to be a lot of people looking at those vacation rentals as an option who might not have historically. Um, so I think that's good. And, and back to a point you made earlier, Walter, is that, you know, along the Gulf Coast, uh, you got some wonderful communities from Panama City to 30A to Destin. There's, there's tons of things there. But but none of those destinations have a downtown like we have. None of them have the arts and culture and the history that we have. Um, and so, you know, what, what, when you, when you're investing in a Pensacola beach, you're not, or a Perdido Key, you're not just investing in, in some beachfront, uh, you know, uh, property and, and that's all the amenity is. I mean, there's a, uh, we, we tell people all the time, Pensacola beach is the only beach with a downtown, uh, on the whole Gulf coast. And so you can come here and have, uh, you know, feeling like a big, big town experience, big community. And so I think we've got, uh, we've got a bright future ahead of us. I think we'll get through this, um, in that, uh, you know, if you, if you're interested in, in, in getting into some, uh, destination where you might want to be and then also rent. I, I don't know if you could beat Pensacola anywhere, uh, in, in Florida and on the Gulf Coast. It's just a phenomenal spot. And I know we'll be back soon. Well, I couldn't say it any better or wrap it up any better. But Rusty, I know you're busy. We appreciate you. Are you working from home? A lot no, of- this is no. I've been at the office every day. Hotels are essential, and so okay. <laughs> we uh, we're, we're here. And uh, I'm sitting in my my little uh, office area right now. So yeah, but you you've got the good view though. I can yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm uh, hunkered down. You know, it's uh yeah. somebody's got to do it. So yeah, <laughs> staying home, staying safe. You know. So, all right, well, thank you. Have a great day, and uh, please keep in touch. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bye.